follow the science. Oh, follow the science. We've got the degrees. We, we did the studies. Follow the science. Believe in what we say. Never mind the power of observation and study that you can sit here and do um, personally on your own. And... Okay, how long has it been since we were here last? It was either two or three weeks ago. The sign is still there saying that the beach is polluted. This has been, I don't know, almost three weeks. It's still there. Still locked. Still can't go to the beach. I got some whoppers for you today. Stick around. Looks like a storm brewing. Lots of stormy type weather lately. It's like an ongoing thing here now. And it's windy again, so I hope you can hear me. Listen to this. You wonder, this day and age, I read so many things that you just it just makes me laugh. Some of these things are so absurd. It's like, are you kidding me? Is this stuff actually being written? I mean, it's like who? It, it, it's like these publications, they put this information out there, and you wonder, does anybody actually believe this stuff? Uh, it's like all it takes is a little bit of critical thinking, which we're going to do today on our Whoppers. It makes you wonder, that, do these publications, will they publish this information, these articles, even if nobody is reading them? That's what I'm wondering. Who in the world would sit there and read that stuff and believe it? But before I get into it, I wanted to just say, there's a principle in a court of law that says that if a witness is found lying about just one thing they're saying, the rest of their testimony is to be disregarded. And this has to do with character. The character of the witness is no longer believable. And that's what I'm getting to in this whopper here, is that uh, some of these publications, they just keep on dishing it out. They keep putting out this information, which is, um, at the very least, just laughable. But at worst, it's a lot worse than that. Even just from a point of view, if let's say that you didn't really have at your fingertips all of the information to counteract everything that you're reading. Just a little critical thinking, for example. I was reading about this lady living on 1.5 carbon or some, some figure like that. Carbon? Right. Yeah, carbon output, carbon usage. Uh, you know, you don't, I don't get into this stuff. That's why I don't, I'm not going to sit here and dissect it in a mathematical way. I'm just going to go about it from a critical thinking point of view, just a simplistic way of saying, wait a minute, this is laughable. She's living on 1.5 carbon, whatever, and, you know, because the earth is, is just getting too hot, but we barely get any sun here. This is supposed to be a desert. It's supposed to be sunny, but we're barely... But never mind that. And so the things that were being outlined in the article about living on this supposedly low carbon usage level was, you know, like, oh, you'll have to stop using the car. You know, like, oh, well, you know, start you know, using a bicycle, you know, eating less meat or no meat, which she found herself not being able to do. She had to go back and eat some meat. And so it was like something we've heard this over and over. Oh, don't eat any meat. Just go back to the vegetables. Eat your, you know, ride your bike, walk, uh, you know, for entertainment. Just do things like, uh, you know, just walking and uh, uh, sitting in a garden or just all these things that just don't seem to you know, add up to anything. Now these are in and of themselves not anything that would cause me to scoff or anything. It's just that when it, it's put within the context of, oh, you have to do this in order to live a low carbon life so that we don't all die of overheating and the planet won't burn off and just turn into ashes or something. And so that's one of the aspects is anytime you want to put out an idea, it's, I mean, we're all free to read and believe or not believe whatever we want, right? And as long as choices are voluntary, you know, people can put out whatever information, you know, in an environment of freedom, the truth will prevail, somebody once said. And uh, it's just that when things start becoming extort in an extortionary uh, manner, 
it's like either they get mandated or they get extorted. Like you either do this or you lose your job or do this or, you know, you, we all know what extortion is. And that's when it becomes a problem, uh, especially for those of us that know better. But beyond that conversation, which isn't what I wanted to point out, what I wanted to point out was that in and of themselves, these things aren't, it's like somebody that is a minimalist would live that way. Like a lot of minimalists would automatically, voluntarily live that way. But For example, I, you know, I'm somewhat of a minimalist, but I still own a car. I just consolidate my trips as much as I possibly can, can but I still, uh, you know, drive a car because I need to. And I enjoy the comfort of a car and in a place where it's necessary to have a car. So I no, I wouldn't want somebody to tell me, oh, you have to ride a bike, but if I want to ride a bike, I'll ride a bike. So that's that voluntarism part of the situation. But then I started adding all of these things up and realizing that that's basically, when you look at it from a world traveler point of view, and I've done, we've done a lot of travel. We've been in a lot of different countries and continents, South America, Central America, Europe, Mexico now, uh, Eastern Europe, and you notice something about the level of existence of the lower classes of people. They tend to be in this level of existence. And it's almost like they want to bring the world or rather the developed countries back into developing world level. If you, when you, this, you know, if for somebody that hasn't really contemplated this, I've had all morning to think about this after I read the article, and it's easy for me to put things in that type of perspective because, again, I've done the travel and I've been around, and a lot of our viewers also have been around, and you've seen, and it's not a judgment against people. Remember, it's just a, a level, a different level that people are, are at in different places on the globe. And it's, it's to say that poverty manifests itself in different ways in different parts of the globe. And it's like in Ecuador when you go to the hardware store and you see a poor man coming up to the counter and he's only buying two, two screws. Which reminds me when I used to go to Lowe's and go, I only needed maybe a handful of screws, but there I am, I have to buy the whole box, I have to spend, and 12 years ago, you know, $11 on a box of screws, maybe nowadays it's $22. Imagine, you would, you would never see such a thing in places like, not picking on Ecuador, it could be any, any developing country, where things are done, and, and again, perspective, it's, it, and one might say, oh, it's just minimalism, it's just minimalistic. Well, not really, it's poverty. And in a way, it's minimalistic poverty. It's, it's, it's a poverty-induced minimalism. It's not an abundance-induced minimalism. It, the, the, the purpose of voluntary minimalism is to induce a kind of self-restraint in order to end up with an abundance in a similar or different sphere. Like, for example, when I don't carry any luggage, I'm able to have more abundant, uh, lower-cost travel, right? So it's uh, one hand washes the other. You know, it's a cause and effect thing. But when it comes to poverty, there's no such thing. It's simply you don't have. And that's what that reminded me of, this article about... And that's a whopper, because they're trying to tell people, the, the, this media is trying to tell people that reverting back to a developing nation state level of, of being. I mean, the article wasn't saying that the purpose of it was so that you could have more free time or that you could have more abundance. Or it wasn't saying that. It was, it was literally just telling people, you should have less, you should do less.
And that comes back to the whole idea of when a witness on a witness stand is found to not be honest on, on one of the things they've said their whole testimony is to be disregarded because of their character. And how many things have we seen come out of the mainstream media already? Uh, and even institutions telling us things that just weren't so. How many times? How long uh, do we have to sit here and, and, and see these articles and listen to things that we're being told over and over and over? How, you know, how, how much more do we have to take before we realize that these things, we just have to shut them off? <laughs> and just start laughing. <laughs> All right, so we're sitting here on the beach without luggage so that we can enjoy the wind <laughs> at no cost. <laughs> And it has to new has nothing to do with the climate because we don't have any control over the climate whatsoever, regardless of how we got here or what we did, what we do, and how much meat we eat. <laughs> yeah, let me know what you think of that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> which brings me to the next whopper, which is to say I was watching another video. Follow the science. Oh, follow the science. We've got the degrees. We, we did the studies. Follow the science. Believe in what we say. Never mind the power of observation and study that you can sit here and do um, personally on your own. And you cannot believe anything you read and hear anymore. You can't. You have to be super very, very careful. And you have to just really... I don't know, if I was just starting out this day and age as a young person that, because I know when I was younger, I just, I always, I still have a thirst for knowledge. I'm always reading and studying. And nowadays it's more of discarding most of it because once you build up a knowledge base, it's always there. But when you're just starting out and you're young, you're trying to, you know, find truth from fiction and, and I, I'm glad I didn't come up during this day and age because it's so tempting to, you know, get our information from the easy sources, you know, the online sources, and those, those seem to be the most corruptible is the online, online sources because they're the most easy to produce. You know, it, it costs just a few pennies to put something online than it does to actually have to produce, you know, uh, something in a format of an actual book that has to get printed, distributed, and, you know, or anything physical or, or this kind of thing. So it's just cheaper and easier to put out misinformation than it ever has been before. And so there I am spending my morning reading and listening to people that are saying stuff that's just gobbledygook. Yeah, what do you think of that? What do you think of all that? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for coming to the video and have a wonderful day.